What is Biden falling back on? He's falling back on just plain old class warfare. Now, you know things are tired when you're just going right back to the class warfare gambit. So here is Joe Biden over the weekend doing his, yeah, I love capitalism, but you got to pay your fair share, blah, blah. Big corporations and the super wealth, they have to start paying their fair share of taxes. It's long overdue. I'm not out to punish anyone. I'm a capitalist. If you can make a million or a billion dollars, that's great. God bless you. All I'm asking is you pay your fair share. Uh, no, that's not what you're asking. So you'll notice that the words fair share tend to mean whatever rate I say for you today. Right? What, what exactly? If you ever ask a Democrat what a fair share constitutes, they'll never give you a straight answer. Because if they said you should pay your share of, for example, the national income, people at the top of the income bracket already pay more than their fair share of the national income. The top 1% pays 40% of all income taxes in America. The top 10% pay all of the net income taxes in the United States, like beyond receiving any benefits, because if you're very rich, you don't receive any benefits from the federal government, basically. This notion that the rich don't pay their fair share in the United States is absurd. The United States actually has one of the most progressive tax systems in the world. In the world. Why? Because all other countries have super high tax rates for people who are in the middle income brackets or the lower income brackets even. If you're living in Scandinavia, you're getting taxed at like 60% if you're making 60, 70,000 bucks a year. All those social programs have a cost. So when Joe Biden says, I'm a capitalist, but pay your fair share, he doesn't mean that. He means, I don't really like capitalism all that much. We understand that it sort of pays the bills. And what I'd really like to do is just suck money out of the people who actually are earning a lot of money to pay for my programs, but not even to pay for my programs because I'm not going to pay for my programs. I have no plans to pay for my programs. All the class warfare stuff, by the way, is just a shtick. It's a, it's a play for the suckers. Hey, all, all the folks who are at the bottom of the income spectrum who look at Joe Biden and they look at the AOCs of the world and the Bernie Sanders, they say, oh, those are people who are standing up for the little people like me. Honestly, at least Bernie Sanders is honest. He wants to screw the little people directly. He's like, okay, if you're in the middle, you should pay a 60% tax rate. Okay, more credit to him. Seriously, more credit to him. But if you're Joe Biden or AOC, you just lie to people. You're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm out there to soak the rich. No, you're not. You're out there to hang out with the rich and take donations from the rich and, and hobnob with the rich and have them pay for all of your campaign. That's what you're there for. And then you're there to yell at the rich every so often so that you can sucker the rubes into supporting you. It's all a game. And by the way, if you didn't know it's all a game, let, let me just recommend that you watch a little video of AOC. Okay, so there's a video of AOC going around before she went to the Met Gala wearing a a very expensive dress that said tax the rich on the back of it. Okay, this video is kind of astonishing because all it is is her being treated like Princess Di. You got a makeup artist. She's got a whole team. She's got, pe she's got people who are wearing tuxes around her. She's kind of dismissive of the little people. And then she walks in and all the people are cheering for her. And, and they, they all understand that they're part of the gag. They don't feel like they're targeted by her tax the rich dress. They know that they agree with her. They don't agree with her enough to actually, you know, not avoid the taxes, but, but they agree with her on principle, which is that they are the special people. They are among the specials. And here's a little bit of that video. <laughs> it's going to be punk rock. It's very punk rock. Peak <laughs> punk rock. Oh, you look so beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't that jazzy and fun? Guys, wasn't that great? She, she was super sincere about it, though. She's really sincere. She really wants to, attach, to, to tax all the, all the rich people. By the way, she really, you know who she wants to tax the most? She really wants to tax rich people like, say, like Aurora James. Right? This lady is a really famous dress designer, apparently, Aurora James. And she needs to be taxed more because apparently she's not only very wealthy and runs a pretty large company, but also this person happens to be a notorious deadbeat on taxes with unpaid debts dogging her in multiple states, apparently, right? Isn't that like a perfect candidate for AOC to target in her tax, the rich dress? Oh, sorry, no, sorry. Aurora James made that dress for AOC and is the person who's been cheating on her taxes, apparently. Apparently, she owes significant amounts in back taxes. Most of her debts sent her around a company she created in 2011, Cultural Brokerage Agency. It serves as the parent company to her, parent, to her current fashion company. The New York Post reports, quote, the company racked up three open tax warrants in New York 
for failing to withhold income taxes from employees' paychecks totaling 15 grand, the State Department of Taxation and Finance told The Post. The debts stem from 2018 and 2019. The company has been hit with 15 warrants in total since 2015. The company got into an even deeper hole with the feds. Between April 2018 and April 2019, the IRS placed six federal liens on cultural brokerage agency, totaling over $100,000. The liens specifically cited the company's failure to remit employee payroll taxes. Apparently, that didn't stop James from receiving $41,000 in pandemic relief aid. Her company owes $63,000 in matters related to workers' comp. Her company has allegedly relied heavily on legions of unpaid interns working full-time jobs. Wait, I was told unpaid internships were evil by AOC. That's, that's crazy. Also, James just bought a $1.6 million property in California last year. It's already listed as delinquent by LA County because she apparently owes more than $2,500 in property tax. Well, so, um... Yeah, so that so tax the rich, except for the lady who made this dress for the Met Gala, who hasn't paid her taxes, but did take federal money, and who is photographed with AOC. Remember how AOC characterized her as a, a woman of color living a victimized life in America? Yeah, man. It's all a game. It's all a game to these folks. By the way, in case you don't believe it's all a game to these folks, I'm just going to remind you that if you're not special, the rule... If you're not special, then the rules apply to you. And if you are special, the rules don't apply to you. Right? If you are a maskless San Francisco mayor, you can party it up. If you're London Breed, the mayor of San Francisco, like how many, I, I would say she should apologize, but there's no point. She might end up governor of California and apparently immune to recall. Here's London Breed at a concert. Right? Partying it up. Good times in San Francisco. Nobody here is wearing a mask. Now, I've been told everyone needs to wear a mask, right? Even the vaccinated. But is anyone there wearing a mask? Nope. Not a single one. Not a single one. The rules don't apply to these people. By the way, the Emmys, which happened last night, I noticed that no one was wearing a mask. No one. Not a single human was wearing a mask. Amazing. Amazing. Apparently, uh, Seth Rogen, who is the presenter, who is just an awful garbage of a human, he appeared baffled by the indoor setting because apparently it was supposed to take place in an air-conditioned tent, but this was fully enclosed. He said, I would not have come to this. Why is there a roof? But he did. He stayed. And uh, they all stayed there unmasked. But then again, they're not, you know, small children. If you're a small, ch if you're a small child, then you must mask. Right? If you're, this video is going around over the weekend of a small toddler being forced to mask by a preschool teacher. Put your mask back on. Is in New York State. Still whines less than most Democrats, but is subject to the rules because he's a child. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And it's just honestly, it's just garbage and it's unbelievable. If you're London Breed, the mayor of San Francisco, you can go to a big party with a bunch of other adults who are much more likely to infect each other with serious illness. And uh, if you're a child, then we will force you to mask because you're not one of the special people. That is the way that all of this works. And they don't hold to any real standard about any of this. How's this for a title? Ben Shapiro Show subscriber destroys like button with clicks and logic. I'd watch that. Make it happen, gang.